Hey everyone, so in this video I just wanted to go over some of the ways that you can use the strengths of the freelancer to make some money. Because right now everyone has a loaner freelancer since there's a bug where sometimes you can't retrieve your ship at a station and you have to go to another one to retrieve it. So everyone has a loaner right now just as a workaround for that bug. So in this video I'm going to go over a few ways you can take advantage of some of the freelancer's strengths to make some money. So the main thing that the freelancer is good at is combat. It is a multi-purpose ship, but right now the way that you're going to be making the most consistent money with it is through doing combat missions. So my favorite ones are the combination of EC and alert and bounty hunting missions in the Hurston system. So I have a more detailed video on this that I'll link below, but basically you just fly around Hurston and wait for EC and alerts and prioritize doing those and then do bounty hunting missions to fill the time in between. And with this method you can make easily 80,000 alpha UEC an hour and with the freelancer it's quite easy. And even with the default ballistic setup you don't really run out of ammo that often since they're not gatlings. And as you can see in these clips it makes quick work of the buccaneers And also these Mustang Deltas here once I start landing a few shots. So you can do all the EC and alert missions and Crime Stat 1 through 3 bounties pretty easily and probably even Crime Stat 4. So in my opinion, combat missions are the best way to consistently earn money currently. It has been a lot more stable than previous patches, but especially with the Freelancer, you're still going to be making more doing combat versus anything else really. So as you can see, it can even take out these constellations pretty easily. And then another thing the Freelancer lets you do is the Claim Jumper missions, which can be tough in a medium or heavy fighter, but the Freelancer has two medium-sized shields, so you don't really have to worry too much. As long as you keep moving, there's very little chance that the turret will hit you, and I like to ignore the prospectors since they're slow, and also if they do manage to catch up to you, they'll do very little damage. So I'm going to speed up the end of this, but what I do is I go around and target all the sentries first, and then at the end I take out the prospectors with the call to arms bonus enabled, and I get about 500 extra credits for each one of the prospectors. So that's why you want to go after the turrets first. And you can watch my shields through this whole time, and they hardly ever dip at all. Also, I think I ran into something at the beginning of the clip, because as you see, I'm only shooting with three guns, so... With four, it would be even easier, but the Freelancer makes quick work of this. Unfortunately, I've done too many bounty hunting missions to be able to accept the, the outlaw version of Claim Jumpers, but there's no real reason to not. Since you're not in a comlink monitored space, there will be really no repercussions for doing so, and it's just an extra 5,000 credits. The one downside to these missions, though, is if you want to do them again, you'll have to switch servers since there's only a set amount per server. But overall, these combat missions would be what I would recommend doing with the Freelancer, because it's pretty tanky, but it can also do quite a bit of damage, and you're not putting anything at stake. So even if you experience a crash, you're not going to lose anything but your time. Alright, so you can see as I take out these prospectors, since I'm done with the mission, I get a little bonus for each one of them I kill, since I have that call to arms mission accepted. And you can find that under the mercenary tab if you don't know what that is.
Now I'm over at one of the moons of Hurston, Ariel, and we're gonna go over to Bezdek and pick up some Laranite. Because one of the things you can do with the Freelancer is a little bit of light cargo, but it's not really that great. You're not gonna make that much money, and you're also gonna be having to risk a large amount of money in doing so. So one tip I have, if you're going somewhere on the surface and you want to mark it again so that you can see it as you fly in, you can spool your quantum drive and also mark it on your map with F2 again, and then it'll show up and tell you the distance to it. Another thing to know is that at the buildings where you can buy the cargo, it's always going to have that spike with the red light on top of it. Okay, so now I'm going to buy some Laranite. And this is one of the issues. Laranite is really the only way that you're going to make a decent profit, since you can only hold a small amount of cargo in the Freelancer. But the issue is it takes a while to fill it up, even with such a small cargo amount. So this took me about... 15 minutes of waiting for it to restock to be able to fill up. So I'd say a round trip for a cargo run like this is probably going to be around half an hour since flying in and out of atmosphere on aerial takes a while and it takes forever to get into Lorville and take off from Lorville. And you could be lucky with the stock levels, but it's definitely not always going to have enough for you to fill up immediately. Okay, and then since Lorville is kind of confusing to get around, I'm going to leave in this part of me going to the central business district to sell. So yeah, you're going to want to take the train that says either Commerce Line or Central Business District. And then once you get there, you're going to go over to transfers. There will be a big sign. And then you can use one of the terminals to sell. So I made about 20,000 credits from this run, which took me about half an hour, which is okay, but you have to consider that I had to invest almost 200k initially to do so, and if there were 30k or anything like that, then I would lose all of that investment. So it's really not worth it compared to doing combat missions. Here's a set of missions that I like to do whenever I'm in the area around Port Olazar. So you basically want to accept these three missions. Two of them will involve taking boxes from this from this um, shipping outpost back to Port Olazar, and then one of them is the investigation one. So the investigation one is really fast to do. All you have to do is 
retrieve the data from that terminal, and then there's one more over up this elevator. So the only other one you need to collect is right in here, in this first room. And then you can go ahead and submit the mission. Okay, and then you'll have to pick up two packages if you accept both of the missions. They don't always all appear, but you can keep checking even while you're there. And sometimes they'll appear while, appear while you're there. So one of them will be marked with a waypoint, and that one will be pretty easy to get and then the other one will have a number on it. And although the freelancer doesn't really have any advantage over other ships in doing this, I do prefer entering in with boxes in EVA through the ladder because in my experience going in through ramps from EVA is always a pain with boxes and somehow the ladder is now the most consistent way to get in. So yeah, if you do these if you do those three missions, you can make around 20,000 credits in about 15 minutes, and you don't really risk anything either. either. So I'm going to go drop both of those boxes off. And when you do drop them off, you want to make sure you have it tracked, and then be closest to that strut when you request to land, so that you can land and drop off the box without having to EVA, because you don't want to EVA with the box once you're at Portal Lazar, because I've had too many issues where I'll land back down from EVA onto a landing pad, trying to EVA over to another strut, and then the box won't be able to be picked up anymore, or stuff like that. One other thing you could do with the Freelancer, if you don't enjoy combat, is box missions and basically chaining them to multiple places. So bringing a lot of boxes with you to the same destination, and I'll link another video about that below. But I didn't really go over that in this video, since the Freelancer doesn't really have any special advantages to any other ships in doing those missions, and it's kind of a disadvantage because it's not that fast in atmosphere compared to some other things like the Titan or the 300 series from Origin. So yeah, really what I'd recommend is just doing those combat missions. The Freelancer isn't the most maneuverable, but it's pretty durable and it packs quite a punch. So if this video helped you, please be sure to like and subscribe because that really helps me. Thanks.